Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 20th January 2018. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly how it can help in your trading you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu before we begin we go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we look at few key commodities that tend to impact related stocks. We look at oil and gold using technical analysis. A rising tide lifts all boats. When the broad market goes up, it tends to take many stocks with it, though not all. We study the broad market's strength using market breadth of NASDAQ NYSE and also technical charts for the broad market ETFs. If we trade with industry's strength that adds additional conviction to the trades. We will study this using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way we may look at some trade examples from Q forum and certainly look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We start with commodities analysis, oil. We are looking at oil using weekly backdrop chart. Oil is above the upper boundary in the weekly chart. This week, it displayed a bearish headwind signal and had a very narrow range week. The weekly candle shape is indecisive and the color is also indecisive. In the daily chart also oil displayed a bearish headwind signal and since then price couldn't go up. The bearish headwind signal doesn't mean that the trend will reverse but it tells that the trend is becoming weak. At minimum, long position holders may be careful and protect profit using Q protection trailing stock. If all the unambiguous checklist conditions of reversal trade setup, between trade setup are met, then one may take a reversal trade as well. In this case, we just had the bearish headwind signal, the bearish headwind trade setup was not there. Price moved sideways, little bit came down, but it is holding on to its earlier gains. As price is very close to the upper boundary, we don't have any low risk entry opportunity in oil. Let's move on to gold. We are looking at gold using weekly backdrop template. Just like US oil had an indecisive weekly candle, gold also has an indecisive weekly candle. The color is bullish cyan but the shape is indecisive with open and close at approximately the same level and having both upper and lower tails. It was also a very narrow range week for gold. 
it has gone up considerably since the last bull release signal appeared several weeks ago and in spite of the up move we can see from relative performance that relative to broad market S&P 500 gold is actually weak. What about the daily chart? In daily chart gold also displayed a bearish headwind signal. So long position holders could be careful and protect profit using trailing stop. It didn't decline much moved sideways this week. This week had four trading days. Monday was holiday. Tuesday it went up. Wednesday, Thursday it went down little bit and Friday it recovered. Price is close to the upper boundary. There is no low risk trade setup at this point. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index weekly charts. Other than the two indices we also study three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume this week nasdaq and nyse made yet another all time highs nasdaq is overbought nyse is overbought nyse is overbought for many weeks now both continue to be in strong uptrend. The lower tails in both the charts show that initially price tried to go down but recovered and both ended very close to the weak side. These shapes are very bullish shapes. In terms of internals, four of the internals that is advanced decline and up down volume for both NASDAQ and NYSE went up. New high low declined little bit but both are above zero level. In summary we may conclude that the indices are clearly bullish. This is the third week of the new year and the bullish run is continuing. The internals are not weak anymore. They are neutral relative to long term values. And for this specific week, internals are strong. Market breadth shows a strong market, bullish market. And we'll see the same is true from the ETF charts as well. We are studying SPY using weekly backdrop and daily hop on templates. Together we call this at a glance template. It helps us decide if there is a low risk entry point at the right edge of the chart. In weekly SPY went up made another new all time high. The candle shape and color both are bullish. It is overbought as seen from the stretch dot appearing on the candle. In daily SPY continues to go up. It is above upper boundary. This week's activity was high and on Friday activity was very high. Price is gradually going up. There is no sign of weakness. It is above upper boundary, so we are not going to try any long trade right now. And there is no short trade for sure. QQQ in weekly chart, it went up, made new all time high, has bullish shape and bullish color candle overbought. In the daily chart, there was a bearish headwind signal on Tuesday, the first trading day of the week. After that, it recovered. 
closed very near the week's high. Weekly activity was high, however, not as high as SPY. Friday's activity was also high, not very high as was in SPY. So activity we can say is relatively muted. However, it outperformed SPY this week. We know that from the relative performance line that tilted up. In daily prices above upper boundary, too high for us to try a low risk long trade. We have a similar picture in Daya. In terms of price move, it also made a new all time high. Candle shape and color both are bullish in weekly chart. It's overbought. Daya had very high activity in this week. Daily chart is very similar to SPY. Gradually but consistently going up. It is above upper boundary. Too far for us to take any long trade. IWM Russell 2000 ETF also made a new all time high. Candle shape and color both are bullish. It is overbought. Activity is muted. Though IWM also made new all time high, the relative performance clearly shows that it is underperforming the overall market. In daily chart, it is very close to the upper boundary, so we are not going to try any long trade. All the four broad market ETFs are now in uptrend. They are extended, there is no low risk buy entry, and there is no signal of weakness in any of the ETFs. Let's see if the same is true from sector industry analysis as well. Every week we study 11 economic sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero point indicates the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left indicates the sector went down. This week 7 of the 11 sectors gained. Overall this paints a bullish picture. Information technology, healthcare and consumer discretionary. These three sectors continued their upward momentum from the previous week. We know that from the red bar as well as the green bar both coming to the right of the zero lines. These three sectors were strong and continuing to be strong. Utilities is one sector that was weak and it is continuing the downward momentum. Both green and red bars are to the left of the zero line. Therefore, 4 of the 11 sectors moved in the same direction as in the previous week and 7 other sectors flip-flopped between gain and loss. This flip-flop shows that at least at sector level momentum is weaker than in the previous week. Telecom and real estate gained. These were languishing for many review periods. We were starting to look for turn around of fundamentally strong stocks. I had identified few such stocks in telecom as well as in real estate. Some of them gave profit, some of them were holding on to their base. Before we end today, I will try to review few of those stocks. 
as they gained this way we may keep an eye for potential by the low opportunities in these sectors the same is true even more for consumer staples it is the biggest gainer of this week and it was weak for long time many of consumer staples industries are accelerating and they also became bullish in terms of QH score this may give opportunity to buy fundamentally strong stocks at value in industry analysis will drill further into this best performing industries of this week among the best performing industries upward momentum continued from the previous week semiconductor it was showing weakness in the previous week but it strongly reversed tobacco that is a consumer staples industry was a losing industry earlier and now it gained other than these two cases all the best performing industries were gaining in the previous week also overall it shows that the industries or stocks that were strong earlier are continuing to be strong semiconductors are industries that reversed abruptly from previous weeks weakness however these industries are bullish for a long time you may be careful about taking new long positions and avoid overvalued stocks you can check a stocks valuation very easily using q fighter food retail one consumer staples industry is strong i found this stock smart and final stores sfs it is optimally valued it went up right after daily chart bullish headwind on 30th october this again shows the importance of keeping an eye on bullish headwind or bearish headwind signals bullish headwind in this case it could catch the very bottom sfs broke out of memory resistance and narrow range with high activity we may look for potential buy opportunity next week let's use q edge drill down from consumer staple sector to its industries and further drill down into food retail industry identify sfs and finally look at its technical charts every time we open q edge it analyzes the 11 economic sectors and more than 170 industry groups across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days 5 days 2 days and even one day for every review period it assigns a large number to the best performing one and a score of 1 to the worst performing one also applies a heat map cyan to the best one magenta to the worst one and a color gradient to all the ones in between this gives us a score card and heat map that instantly tells us which one is strong over primary review period that is 5 days for both long term as well as swing trade entry and also shows which ones were weak earlier magenta and probably turning cyan now real estate and consumer staples for example consumer staples is a better example of a sector that was clearly weak earlier magenta turned into strength over 5 days period cyan also has the best score of 11 
holding on to that strength over two days and one day periods. Pace column shows that it accelerated fast. From the sector analysis, we can drill down to consumer staples industries. That brings only the relevant industries into industry analysis. We can sort over five days period to get the strongest industries to the top. Food retail is one industry that was weak earlier. It is strong for a while and continuing to be strong over five days, two day and one day period. We can drill down further into food retail. QH will go to Thomson Reuters and get the stocks belonging to the industry. It has found five stocks. We click the calculator button to retrieve data on the five stocks and calculate these vital statistics. Instantly from color coding we know SFS is optimally valued. We know that from the cyan color on the relative valuation score. It also has good potential for short squeeze. Let's have a look at this chart. We are looking at SFS using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. That is the at a glance template. In the weekly chart, some time ago, there was a watermark support level. Price tried to go below that and very next week it reversed. That created a false downside breakout on this candle. Since then price has gradually gone up and now moving sideways. For several weeks, this week it went up again. In daily chart, it displayed a bullish headwind. Sometime in late October and that could catch the very low of the stock. Since then price went up. There was a bearish headwind that could also catch the very top. Price came down little bit. There were multiple memory resistance lines. On Monday it broke out of all those memory resistances with a bullish shape candle, bullish traffic light color candle and with heavy activity. If somebody was running sonar in real time they could identify the cyan color candle just as price was going above the watermark resistance level and that was the level of the memory resistance as well. One could take a long trade at that point using real time 5 minute chart and then hold on to the trade. The industry is strong. This stock is optimally valued and on Q charts it is showing bullishness. So this may give us a low risk entry opportunity for a buy position. Someone could take the trade on Tuesday itself. One may try to enter a position next week if it continues to go up. Tobacco also in consumer staples accelerated and came to the best performing list. In this industry, Philip Morris PM is optimally valued. It broke out of triangle pattern on Friday, 19th January. Using fine-tuned real-time chart, you could make precise entry into this stock for long position. Let's again use Q edge to drill down from tobacco to Philip Morris and then finally look at its technical charts. We go to industry analysis. 
it is showing all the consumer staples industries tobacco is one that was weak for long time now rapidly gained strength over one month it had a score of 18 over 10 days that increased to 98 over 5 days that increased sharply to 165 and it is holding on to those gains over 2 days and 1 day period. The pace column is showing acceleration over 5 days. We could again drill down. It has retrieved 5 stocks. Click the calculator button to get data on the stocks and calculate vital statistics. Again instantly from color coding we see that Philip Morris PM is optimally valued. The cyan color for relative value shows that it has good earnings quality. Also pays a dividend of 3.93%. Let's look at Philip Morris using technical charts. In the weekly chart, Philip Morris was inside a triangle pattern. This week it broke out strongly with heavy activity. In daily also there were multiple memory resistance levels, three of them actually. And Friday's candle broke through all of them. It was a very bullish shape candle and the candle flow color was also bullish cyan. Interestingly, there was a bearish headwind signal earlier that almost like a magic predicted a possible down move and the stock fell sharply after that. It is very surprising how before the fact many times the headwind signal can foretell possible slowing down of the stock and sometimes even change in direction. I can see there was a bearish headwind in the weekly that also caught the very top of the stock. This Friday's candle was very bullish, a very long candle. So we will probably not take a long at the close of the day. It already went up 3.65%. However, if we were using real-time fine-tune chart, we could probably use the early range breakout technique to precisely enter a low-risk long trade. Let's see if such an opportunity was indeed there. This is Philip Morris using 5-minute chart Q fine-tune template. Soon after market open on Friday, which was at this level, early range high and early range low lines formed. The sector was strengthening, industry was strengthening as well. The stock itself was optimally valued. So we would keep an eye on this stock on Sonar we could take the buy position just as it broke above the early range high at this price level. On an intraday basis, we could put stop at early range low. By the close of the day, the reward was definitely higher than the risk taken. A day trader could even book partial position and swing traders could hold on to the trade. This is the way we can take precise entry of swing trades using 5 minute charts. Indeed there was a low risk entry opportunity in Philip Morris using fine tune chart. Using daily chart it would probably be too late. If we are using daily chart we may now wait for it to go up, come down, create a swing low and then go up again. That will give us the next 
low risk long entry opportunity worst performing industries there are three industries in this list related to automobiles and motorcycles automobile manufacturers automobiles and motorcycle manufacturers interestingly auto and motorcycle industries which are worst performers in this way they were decelerating one week ago last week's deceleration in q edge could correctly predict the possible decline in these industries one stock in automobile manufacturers ford dropped by 8.8 percent this week that's a very sharp drop you could use q vital to instantly check that it had the poorest growth among peers so in terms of growth it was weak again there was a bearish headwind on q daily chart that almost magically got the very top using the q analysis that is the deceleration in the industry the weakness in growth of this particular stock and the bearish headwind signal all these three weaknesses you would certainly protect profit if you had a long position and that would be a very good idea because the stock dropped heavily let's use q edge again to drill down from industry to the stock and then look it up in q charts for seeing the worst performing industries we can sort the industries over five days smallest to largest we can see automobile manufacturers is having the worst possible score of one it was more cyan earlier and gradually turning into weakness we can drill down into its stocks it has found six stocks we can retrieve the data and calculate vital statistics for this one stock its valuation is pretty good however in terms of growth it is the weakest in this list a stock can be strong either in terms of valuation or growth usually not both in this case Ford had good valuation but growth was weak the shaded background over one year EPS growth shows that it was actually negative let's look at its technical charts in the weekly chart Ford was at a resistance level watermark resistance that was coming from far far ago price hit that level and sharply reversed very interestingly the bearish headwind appeared right at the very top and very next day it gap down fell further on thursday and friday yet another beautiful example of how q360 degrees analysis would allow one to be cautious and protect profit now ford has already dropped significantly from the top so it is too late to take any short trip if it goes up creates a swing high and tilts down again then it will give a low risk short opportunity a go with flow short opportunity we'll take such a shot only if the industry is also weakening at the same time we also study the accelerating industries they tend to be the best performers down the line consumer staples revert strongly with six consumer staples industries accelerating all these industries also turned bullish in terms of edge score 
these are packaged food and meats household products food products soft drinks personal products and beverages because the sector was weak and some of these industries were also weak and accelerating now you may look for low risk buy opportunities we already saw one possible buy opportunity when we analyze the best performing industries and from this I drilled down into packaged foods and meats and found this stock Sanderson Farms SAFM. It is optimally valued, has given a bullish flow candle in daily chart and is resting on long term support. It went up sharply 3.3% on Friday. There may be a buy opportunity in this stock. Let's analyze it using Q360 degrees analysis starting from QH for identifying the accelerating industries we sort the industries over pits five days column largest to smallest the accelerating industries come to the top packaged food and meats is one of them it was clearly weak magenta for long time and this week sharply reversed it gained score from 29 to 149 that showed up as cyan colored over the base column showing it is accelerating we can drill down it has found 35 stocks clicking the calculator button will retrieve the data on these stocks and calculate vital statistics to sort and filter, we can click the investigate button, the magnifying glass, get the data in vital analysis. Let's sort them using relative valuation score. And instantly from color coding, we can see that SAFM is optimally valued and also has very nice growth relative to its peers. We know that from the cyan or green colors both for EPS growth as well as revenue growth columns has strong earnings quality that caught my attention it went up by 3.35 percent on Friday let's have a look at its chart again interestingly earlier the weekly chart displayed a bearish headwind that could catch the very top and at the same time daily also displayed a bearish headwind that caught the very top. It's amazing isn't it? At the right edge it came to the white very slow direction line that's a long term support line moved sideways for a while and on Friday went up by 3.35% with high activity. The daily candle color is cyan that is bullish. Shape is also bullish. In weekly we have a bullish shape candle. The candle color is yellow neutral. We know that previous resistances may turn into support. I saw that there was a watermark resistance earlier that was broken now price came to the exact same resistance level and reversed this may be a case where the previous resistance is now acting as support and daily also has a support from the white direction line there is no go with flow trade setup because the stock is still in downtrend. However, traders sometimes take long trade in a stock when it comes to strong support like the white direction line and goes up from there. That gives a very low risk entry opportunity. 
because the industry accelerated and the stock is optimally valued and went up strongly on Friday this may be considered for a buy position we study decelerating industries because they tend to be worst performers in subsequent weeks we saw first hand example of that again this week in auto industries which were decelerating one week ago and resulted in auto industries being the worst performers in this week. What are the decelerating industries of this week? Industrials dominate them. Five of the industries are in industrial sector. They are made in airlines, office services and supplies, aerospace defense and agricultural and farm machinery. I drill down into airlines and found sky waste s k y w valuation is in the middle earnings growth is actually strong so fundamentally we cannot say this stock is weak it is in fact strong in terms of growth in terms of technicals the stock is at pendulum high that is at a very high level relative to its yearly price range and there are some signs of slowing down because the industry decelerated it may be wise to protect profit in existing long position using trailing stock let's start with q edge look at the industry look at the stocks fundamental and look at the technical charts in QH to find the decelerating industries we sort on the pace 5 days column from smallest to largest. The decelerating industries come to the top. Airlines is one of them. It was cyan earlier that is stronger and now turned into magenta. Its code is also bearish now over 5 days in magenta color and the score drop happened fast that shows up as magenta color in the paste color we can drill down to the stocks by clicking the drill down button it has found 10 stocks clicking calculator will retrieve the data and calculate vital statistics I saw this stock Sky W, SKYW, valuation is in the middle in yellow color. In terms of earnings growth over one year and two years period, it is actually one of the strongest. HA, Hawaiian Airlines has the strongest growth and SKYW is the second one in terms of earnings growth. So fundamentally it is not weak, it has earnings coming up soon, this is earnings season, many of the stocks have earnings coming up, SkyW has earnings on 1st February, so there is some time before the earnings. Through Q charts, we see there was a bearish headwind in weekly, few weeks ago, that candle was indecisive. After that price couldn't go up, one week ago price started lower, closed higher but right at the watermark resistance created by the earlier bearish headwind. This week it tried to go up but reversed, thereby we can say creating a false upside breakout. The backdrop candle color flipped. It turned from cyan into magenta without going through the neutral yellow color. That indicates a sharper reversal and not a gradual reversal. In daily, there were multiple bearish headwind signals. Here price tried to go above the watermark created by this bearish headwind 
but reversed and then dropped. At the right edge, price tried to go above the watermark resistance and dropped again. I had mentioned earlier that if there is a bearish headwind that resulted in decline of stock and then price goes to the same bearish headwind level, there may be more selling left and there is a chance price will decline. On Friday, the traffic light candle color is still bullish. The shape is bearish. It opened and closed at almost the same price. Because the weekly is not able to surpass previous high that was created by the bearish headwind and daily is creating a double top. We may be cautious and use protective stock on this stock if we have existing long position. This is more true because the industry decelerated. Is there a short setup? The weekly backdrop candle color is clearly bearish magenta and we have a double top now. We have a bear release signal and we have potential exhaustion. So if next week price continues to go down gives us at least a yellow color candle then we may take a sideways market box short trade. If we are using fine tuned real time chart we may be able to take the trade with very small risk. You may keep an eye on this stock for the existing long positions may need to be protected and may also look for potential short using box trade setup. Let me summarize. This is the third week of the new year that is strongly bullish for stocks. In the past two weeks everything went up. Oil went up, gold went up as well as stocks went up. This week gold and oil paused. They didn't go up, they didn't go down either, made indecisive candles in the weekly charts. However, the stock market went up. All the broad market ETFs made new time highs again. Drilling down, I noticed that the strong stocks are very much holding on to their gains. That is the growth stocks are holding on to their gains and going up. Some of the value sectors like consumer staples and telecom showed some possible signs of reversal, especially consumer staples. Several of consumer staples industries accelerated and became bullish in terms of score. You may look for buy the low opportunity in these industries. This shows that the growth stocks are continuing to hold on to gains and may even be going up and some of the value stocks are also starting to go up. As the market is bullish, you may continue to hold on to long positions that are in profit. Even if the industry is showing sign of weakness, for example the auto industries, or the airlines industry that we saw. It is still not required to exit a trade. You may use protection signal to apply stop to protect profit. As the market is very strong, it may be safer to stay away from short trades. Before I end, let me review three stocks that I had discussed earlier. Let's look at these stocks using QVITAL to see their fundamental strength and then look them up on charts. One of them was CBL. It was a real estate stock. I had discussed that it was and is still fundamentally very strong best possible score both for relative and internal valuation pays a very high dividend 14%. There is a potential 
for short squeeze. Though the real estate sector was weakening in last couple of weeks, I observed that CBL was able to hold on to its base. And I mentioned it in previous market roundup. Let's look at the chart. It is still holding on to the base very nicely, both in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. It has very high dividend optimal valuation. If the industry starts to go up, if real estate sector goes up, this probably will be one of the first to go up. Remember it has very high short squeeze score as well. The other stock that I discussed was in telecom sector. Again a sector that was weak, not strong yet. However, if the sector goes up, this stock will probably be one of the first to go up. We are retrieving the data to calculate vital statistics. Instantly we see, again just like CBL was in real estate, CenturyLink in telecom has the best possible relative valuation score and has a very high dividend again, 12.48%. Also has a short squeeze potential. CenturyLink reversed after displaying bullish headwind. The bullish headwinds were able to catch the very bottom again. It has gained since then and moving sideways. In daily, it is inside a triangle pattern bounded by memory resistance at the top, memory support at the bottom, also has watermark resistance nearby. It's moving in narrow sideways range. If it breaks out of this range, it may give us a breakout trade opportunity with low risk. You know I am not fond of breakout trades except when the breakout gives me a low risk entry opportunity and CTL may give such a setup. These two stocks are in different sectors, different industries, but some things are similar. Both are holding on to their price levels, not declining, though the sectors were weakening in past couple of weeks. These two stocks didn't weaken. Both have very large dividend and very nice valuation. So I thought both of these are potential buy opportunities. If we use Q360 degrees analysis, look at industry strength weakness, fundamental strength weakness and finally technical strength weakness, we are able to find many such opportunities. Be prepared and enter it well ahead of others. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.